Well, good morning. Welcome to Ebenezer United Methodist Church. Today we are celebrating the fourth weekend of Advent, God's love for us. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your love. The love that you demonstrated through your son, Jesus Christ. For what greater love can one have than to lay down their life for another? We praise you for this ultimate act of love, God. And we would ask to be blessed with your presence of your spirit here today. As we worship and sing praises with hearts full of love. In Christ's holy name, amen. 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 Scripture reading this morning comes from Psalm 24. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. For he founded it on the seas and established it on the waters. Who may ascend the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? The one who has clean hands and a pure heart. Who does not trust in idols or swear by false gods? They receive blessings from the Lord and vindication from God their Savior. Such is the generation of who seek him, who seeks your face, God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, you gates. Be lifted up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, you gates. Lift them up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is he, this King of glory? The Lord Almighty, he is the King of glory. This is God's word written for us. And let's see. Our hymn of praise this morning is A Little Town of Bethlehem on page 230.
fellowship song, Emmanuel, Emmanuel, is printed in your bulletin.
Apostles' Creed on page 881. 881. 881. Apostles' Creed. All together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, and suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended to heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Christmas. I'm Joan, and these are my children. One daughter is um, working. She's a nurse at Piedmont today. But it's uh, Susan, Diane, John, Judy that's not here, and Jim, and our granddaughter, Christy. She was an acolyte before, so we're letting her handle that. <laughs> Good morning. The Advent scripture reading is from the third chapter of John, verses 16 and 17. For God so loved the world, he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Indeed, indeed, God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. So I was nominated to do the Christmas number. And as you know, this Christmas is, is going to be a little different for us, as it is for a lot of families this year. Um, but we have so, so many memories um, of Dad. And um, Dad was a Christmas guy. I mean, he just was. That's why we sang a Christmas hymn at his funeral. That's why he used to try to you know, make sure we had a Christmas hymn in July. Uh, because he was trying to beat out, you know, the commercialization of Christmas. And, um, <clears throat> but, but Dad could sometimes get a little carried away with it. And um, he liked Christmas so much that we really had a hard time getting the Christmas tree down at the house. And the thing is, we always had a live tree. And... Um, so, you know, I mean, I don't think there's anything wrong with, you know, first week in January, you're still admiring your tree. Um, and, and that was all fine and well. I don't think any of us had problems with that. But then, you know, we'd all be back in school, um, and Dad would be, you know, in the morning, he'd get up, have his coffee as he sat there and admired the Christmas tree with the lights on. And so then it was, well, okay, one of us kids had to kind of grab the plug before the school bus went by. Because we were so embarrassed, you know, like our friends are going to see, you know, we still got the Christmas tree going. And um, it used to be a real event, um, and it was a struggle. And so Sue, daughter number one, uh, absolutely put her foot down and said, it will be down by my birthday, which was February 7th. And, <laughs> and there was many a February that would come along and it was coming down right before her birthday party. And, uh, but he loved Christmas. He, he loved Christmas because it represented uh, being with family. He loved Christmas because it represented the birth of Christ. 
and uh, for Dad, um, Christmas was a, a very, very special time. I'm sure many of you remember, uh, no matter how bitter cold it was, and I'm hoping Glenn's going to be kinder to us in some ways, um, even if it was, as Dad would say, it's just a little bit of rain, um, as we would all proceed out, <laughs> cold and windy, and there we would be standing out, and I'm sure many of you remember many a Christmas standing out in the front uh, at the candlelight service. So anyhow, we have lots and lots of memories of Dad and Christmas here at the church uh, and, and Dad and Christmas at home. Amen. Uh, today's altar flowers are in celebration of Jim and Carlin Remick's anniversary. Uh, Jim and Carla were married in the north side of Chicago in Gurney and they're by their former pastor at Alpharetta Presbyterian. Um, their son Bryson was 10 years old and he served as the best man. Okay. Today immediately after the service we'll be having our fellowship meal. Please uh, plan on staying and uh, celebrating with us and enjoying. Uh, also at 4 o'clock today we'll have a Christian believer. Okay. And Monday morning, we'll have our regular 9 a.m. prayer here in the sanctuary. If you can, uh, join in for that. That's a very special time. And Wednesday, noon Bible study. Wednesday evening, we'll have our regular services with our meal and our studies and choir. And Thursday, the singers will meet uh, in the parking lot. And there's nothing on Friday. Uh, Saturday we'll have our Christmas Eve services. 3 p.m. will be for the kids and family. 5 p.m. a traditional candlelight and I believe there'll be refreshments in between at 6 and 7 o'clock we'll have a second traditional candlelight service. Uh, Christmas Day, Sunday, uh, I believe the service is 12 o'clock, is that right? And come as you are. If you would like to come in your pajamas, it's up to you. But anyway, bring what you want. Bring what, if you got a nice gift from Santa or something like that, bring it and share it with everybody. It'll be a really special service. Do we have any other announcements? Very well. Um, I just wanted to let everybody know that we will be having our Christmas dinner at 6 o'clock on January 8th at 4 o'clock. That will be the 10th and 2nd Sunday in January. Also, um, for Christmas Eve refreshments, we're going to be doing finger food at night. Okay, so no Christian believer tonight. No Christian believer tonight. Okay. okay, thank you, Gigi. Because it also, I've got, I've got help over here that tells me I need workers for setup for the reception and for cleanup after the reception. So just think about it, pray about it, all that. And, and I would, you know, I, and obviously that Christmas seems such a big tradition with us, and it's unusual that Christmas on Sunday, obviously it doesn't happen much, but, you know, I would encourage you that noon Christmas service on Sunday, uh, I think that would be worth being at. And we encourage you not only come as you are, whether it's pajama slippers or robe, but also if you want to bring a Christmas gift with you that Santa brought you that day, we do a little show and tell. <laughs> I'm sure we'll be singing some Christmas carols, so um, it'll just be very cool. So we invite you to be a part of that. We have a lot of things that we want to give thanks for. A lot of things have been happening around the church. We had a, a wonderful event yesterday with our, uh, our breakfast with Santa. Uh, throughout this week, we have, now Norman Quinn's funeral is on Wednesday, and you all know how faithful Norman and Eugene have been in this church for so many years. And it was a uh, while while we're grieving over the loss of Norman, it was also a celebration just for uh, the faithful life that uh, Norman led, and and just for the wonderful service. Once again, the volunteers that hosted the reception here, grateful for that. We've had a couple of major surgeries over this past week. It's a, June Butler's daughter, Catherine, on Friday underwent surgery to replace really the bone right in her eye socket, which was uh, broken in many places after an accident, the cheekbone, and that went very well. She's home now and resting, and we anticipate virtually a full recovery. Gary Williams had his uh, surgery for melanoma on Friday afternoon as well, and the surgeon was very pleased how that went. And we're, we're you know, looking forward to good news continued from Gary. And, uh, well, 
we're just very grateful. And certainly that we have the pillagers here and lighting the candle of blood, which could not be more appropriate. It just it's hard to believe that this is the fourth Sunday in Advent and Christmas is next week. And so whether we're prepared or not, think about it, it's going to be here. And it has been, a, uh, we've experienced a lot of blessings in this church. The Lord has been answering prayer. Because the Lord is still in the miracle business. We want to be faithful to all those prayer concerns. For every name that's listed in our opponent, for those families, for our nation. And just that, uh, well, we're just praying through this holiday season. which can be very stressful for people. There's a... A lot of folks are dealing with issues during the season that they don't feel that sort of perfect Christmas that that you know we all would like to have, and just sort of uh, just remain faithful and prayer for all this. So, what other prayer concerns or Thanksgiving do we want to raise up this morning? Yes, Scott. I have to go to the Christmas Clinic Friday because I have a good report. A good report on Friday from the clinic. Okay, Scotty, we'll do. Shall I help? I would like. Matthew Flynn for quick healing without complication or infection. He has a major surgery on Thursday. He's got a huge open wound that they won't heal for the next four to six months. Okay. Matthew Flynn. Matthew Flynn. Well, I had the house. It's a lot going on right now. I can see the waste of the community for a long time. And so for all the all the, the people over at Heather House up here were married. I'm sure that. <coughs> okay. uh, one name, two, Miss Stone ninety nine. Okay, all of a sudden she's Okay, Sue, who's gonna be ninety nine years old. And then there's some more uh, a friend of mine named Jeannie. We've been friends ever since I got there. Okay, so Sue and Jeannie and, and the uh, people over at Heather House. Now, a lot of them are going. I, I can see it every day. But I try to keep my face, take care of them, and try to make them feel welcome. I try to do what God wants Thank you, Mary. <coughs> and one more back there. Did Grandpa Osborne, you have an uh, MRI? Monday on his knee, he fell twice on the same knee, getting into the house. I'm sorry, who did that? Grandpa. Okay. Osborne. Grandpa Osborne. Yes. So we just pray that it doesn't require surgery. Okay. Just a quick point. Rob Waters, I think you know him. His father unexpectedly passed away on Friday, so prayers for the family for Rob. Okay, Waters. Yeah, Waters. Rob Waters' father passed away Friday, so we want to pray for the Waters family. Rock. Asher had a setback last month when he went in for his eye, and they're going back in tomorrow to check it again to see if they have to leave. Okay, for two year old Asher, has been battling eye cancer really for well over a year now. Miss George. Uh, well, I want to thank you for the prayers that I offered for my wife. She's continually getting better. Uh, my brother-in-law, unfortunately, has gone home, and the while it's, it was wonderful release for him, it was uh, grateful for me to have been with him the last 12 weeks. Okay. Dorothy? I want to say thank you for the blessings of this church and help meant so much to me. My friend Mary Evelyn Holland is here from Bradenton, Florida. We've been friends 56 years and we're the best of friends. And she'll be here in a month. I'd like some of you to meet her. She's a lovely lady. That's great. So glad to have you here. So grateful. Thank you. Gigi? Um, I didn't want to be remiss in thanking God and letting you all know that um, last week I had an epidural up above my fusion side of my neck. And for the first time in five years, I have healing back in fingers and I have less pain than I've had since all of this crazy autumn awesome. started. Amen. So That's great. Amen. Thank you. Well, it's great to have you all here today. It is a wonderful day to be in the house of the Lord. 
Let's have a moment of meditation and quiet as we prepare this. Silence is good. Lord, we're grateful to be in your presence and just ask that in the serenity of this sanctuary that you would pour out your Holy Spirit, guide us into all truth, Lord. Order our steps that we may be about your will and not our own. Lord, we have so much to celebrate and give you thanks for and the laughter in this room and the joy and the fellowship of believers and for longtime friends, for answered prayer, for successful surgeries, for new birth, for upcoming weddings. Lord, we just give you thanks. But Father, you know that uh, while we celebrate the miracles that have taken place here, you know the need, the great need we have. So it's our desire for every prayer concern that we've raised up this morning for every unspoken concern as well that each and every one of us holds in our heart, for every name listed in our bulletin, Lord, that we would drop all these at the foot of your throne and leave them there. Lord, we know that you're a God of miracles, that you can do anything that you desire to do, and so it is our desire to intercede on behalf of our loved ones. And not only they would experience physical healing where that is needed or, or emotional healing, for those who have fractured relationships that are so often rough raw at this time of year, Lord, we pray for miracles. We pray for reconciliation. We pray, Lord, just that people might know the hope we have, the eternal hope we have. And just through all this, that this time of year, Lord, that we would recognize and remember not just that God put skin on 2,000 years ago, but that you were alive and well in this place on the holy ground. So for all these things, we give you thanks. Lord, we ask that God, that through this season, through this year ahead, that we would remain a united body of believers of one accord, that we might not be a stumbling block to all those who need to know about you, but just reflect your glory and your mercy and love at this season when we celebrate all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> Can the Astros come forward, please? Let us pray. Father, you have richly blessed us in every way. You are so good to us. Father, please receive these tithes and offerings as tokens of our love for this ministry and for this body of Christ. Please bless them and multiply them and send them forth from this place so people might know the love of Jesus Christ. In his holy name, amen.
try to have a preparation this morning is there's a song in the air on page 249. We do a choir? Or the choir's going to sing? Who wants the choir to sing? Yeah.
Well, you know, Abbott's all about preparation. Be prepared. <laughs> you know, we, we do our best to get everything just right, orderly. Whatever it is, the event we do is it. You know, if you're having people over, you want something. It's just making sure we've dotted every I, cross every T. And, you know, it, it's that way when we have special events like uh, holidays or Christmas or. You know, certainly we, we, you know, weddings. We got a wedding coming up here in three weeks, and I look at all the preparations that go on for things that we want to go well. And, and actually, we've gotten more and more into the preparations. We got more and more into getting organized and hiring people to help us. It used to be pretty simple. We plan for an event, advent preparation. It used to be pretty simple. We plan for weddings. You know, if you got engaged in wedding, yet, and then you had maybe an engagement party, and maybe you had a shower, and then you had a rehearsal, then you got married, and you were gone, right? Oh, not anymore. Oh, no, now, now, you know, it's a big rigor roll how, how people play and even the engagement. You know, how they, how they uh, get engaged and, and sometimes they'll film and have some surprise. And then after the engagement, does, well, it's not time for the wedding shower. It showers with an S on it. If you happen to be a young woman who was in college, one of your friends is getting married, I hope you got a big bankroll, <laughs> right? Because we got, no, it used to be just a wedding shower, but now you could have like a, a kitchen shower, Right? Preparation, kitchen shower. And then they would have the, you could have a honeymoon shower. They would have a lingerie shower. A mon, you know what a monogram shower is? <laughs> monogram shower is you show up and you bring all things that got their, their things on, whether it's bath towels or napkins or, gla or whatever. Mon, you know, monogram shower. There's the stock the bar shower. Stock the bar. And, and then, not just what you think, you could also, you know, you might get a bottle opener or you might get now. I'd probably get swizzle sticks, but that's the stock of the bar. <laughs> See, but then you know, all this preparation because you want this, this, this event to be big. But then after the showers are over, you know, and you might have numerous engagement parties. At one wedding I did, an engagement party, they spent like three weeks all down at the Florida beach just sort of hanging out, getting to know each other. Right? But they do now. So then not only, you know, the engagement parties, but, but then, uh, well... They used to have just a, a simple little bachelor party, you know, and the boys went out the night before and spent a few hours and had a wedding. Well, bachelor party, they may go to Vegas for a weekend. And a bachelorette party, they may go down the islands for a weekend. It's all, nothing simple, right? Because we want this to be so memorable. Everything, you know, how we look and the food and the music and it's, all those things. So the wedding would be special, right? Because it's a big event. Rehearsal dinner. It used to be a rehearsal dinner. You know, you'd have, I don't know, the, the wedding party there. It might be a dozen people. They'll have 70, 80 people at a rehearsal dinner now. One thing's just, the only thing is just to be right and perfect. Our scripture this morning is from the first chapter of Matthew. It's about another impending wedding. It turns out a little differently than what our expectations are now. If you have your Bible with you, I encourage you to open up First chapter Matthew. I'm going to read verses 18 through 25. It's about the betrothal of Mary and Joseph. It said, This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph. But before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and didn't want to expose her publicly to disgrace. He had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son. You are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet, the virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he had no union with her until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. This is the good news of the gospel. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So here we have Mary and Joseph, and things are a little differently then than they are now, in all honesty. I mean, we put a whole lot more preparation thinking about the sermon that's going to come, and we probably ought to put a whole lot more thought into the marriage. <laughs> See, back then, it was, it was such a commitment that in this case, Mary and Joseph were not yet married, but when they were pledged to one another, there'd be basically a contract with these couples and these families. 
And so the tradition would have been then is, is after you find the, the person that you want to marry and they agree to marry, and, and then this, this uh, process goes on where the groom-to-be would typically return to his home and build a room out of the house. And he'd make preparations for his new wife and then for his family. And after all those preparations were made, whenever that time was, that he would show up with his buddies, the groomsmen, and, and there'd be the celebration, they had this wedding. But before they got married, this betrothal, this engagement period, it was known. It's not like today, before you get married, you know, you may still go out with your friends and hang out. I mean, this was, this was a commitment. And so, part of this process, I'm sure Joseph, young man, a carpenter in the line of David, said a righteous man, why well, I've been preparing for this. So in all those preparations that you want to go so well, you know, who's going to be here, and what are we wearing, and what's the food, and what's the music going to be like, and, and what hall, and, and, and uh, how's everybody going to get here in time? Nowhere in those plans would be, oh yeah, by the way, your bride-to-be is expecting a child. That'd be a problem now then it would be beyond scandalous. There'd be legal ramifications. Joseph, a righteous man, knew the law. But he didn't want to shame. He did not want to shame his bride to be publicly. So he was making, making arrangements to divorce her quietly, to save her. Now, isn't that interesting? Joseph, a righteous man, who would have known the law, the righteous thing to do is uphold the law, isn't it? They think what a judge does, somebody messes up, you're like required to hold them to the law. We do that with our kids, right? But there's a higher law at work here. Joseph, a righteous man, knew that what happened here is something wrong, and he could have exposed his fiance to public shame. Because imagine the outrage you would have if, if you had a commitment to somebody and found out that they had been unfaithful. You have every right to be outraged and cry for justice. A self-righteous man can do that. But Joseph's a righteous man in the eyes of God with mercy, gentleness, wasn't looking for justice or revenge, but divorce her quietly until an angel appears and tells, tells Joseph, says, Joseph, don't, don't be afraid to take Mary in your home. He said that child she has, it, it's from the Holy Spirit. And matter of fact, this child is, you're, you're gonna, we're going to tell you what the name of your son's going to be. You're going to name him Jesus because he's going to save the world from sin. What's so remarkable, we take Mary and Joseph. You know what we do with them? We put them on stained glass. Isn't that lovely, that stained glass? And we made big statues. They look so good in those statues. They look perfect, don't they? And we got a little nativity scene, and you know, there, there's a little manger, and all the animals are like looking at Jesus, and got an angel. It's so warm and cut like Christmas, isn't it? But it's a stable, and stables smell, right? And there's not much of a wedding party for Mary and Joseph, and, it, and it's not much of a celebration. You know, you're getting married to somebody who's expecting a child. Why did the Lord not choose to let Joseph know beforehand? Why would you let Joseph go on and, and all of a sudden have to go through that anxiety of, oh, the one I'm supposed to marry, expecting. And he makes a decision quietly to divorce her. You know, we, we so often worry about, you know, getting things in order, and the truth is, life really is messy, isn't it? It is messy. And, and you know, it, and the thing is, the Lord will, will bless us through that mess. He doesn't take us away from that. As a matter of fact, if we don't want things that are messy... You know, we desired this orderly thing at Christmas. We want everything orderly. But the, the truth is, the first Christmas was a bit of a mess, wasn't it? And, and no matter how perfectly we want things lined up, is that our lives, there are things that get, they get, they get off track. But I'll tell you, you know, if, if, we want, if we want things to be perfect, perfect music, we don't have to try to sing. We're not persons. We, we, could, we could play some CDs in here. We're going to sit around and enjoy perfect music, couldn't we? If we chose, why do we choose to sing imperfectly? Because it's better, that's why. It's better. Matter of fact, you want great preaching? Well, we get videos, man. There's a bunch of great videos of great preaching. We can sit back and watch. Quit shaking your head, Candy. <laughs> Jeez. Man. That yeah, sounds pretty good to me. No, we can do that. Well, we got some great preachers. We, we can sit back and watch and, and be wonderful. We know exactly when it begins. But, it'd be... but we don't do that, do we? 
It's kind of funny, you know, my preparation for sermons, I'll very often, I always pray for an anointing, I always pray for clarity, I always pray for the Lord to reveal things to me, and I pray that, that I not be a stumbling block, and, and, and sometimes, you know, when I go to sleep on Saturday night, I'm not comfortable where I am. I'm like, Lord Jesus, I'm, you know, I'm not sure this is coming together, and help me, and, and I'll pray about it. There's times I'll get up at four in the morning, I'll get up and think, but this thing ain't working, I'll get the Bible out, and I'll sit down and, and nervously go through it, and then I'll get up early and, and get in here, and I'm like... You know, going through because I'm not sure, and I'll pray. And so last night I was praying as I was preparing for this. I'm, Lord, I'm not, I'm not sure I have this right, Lord. I said, you know, give me an example, show me what it is that, that I should be sharing. And it's unusual. I don't really remember dreams. I don't remember many dreams. I don't know. Is that, is that getting old? Is that, is that what, I don't know. But I, I really, I go, I go a long walk without remember. Well, last night I remember dream after dream after dream. And it was funny. It wasn't the same dream, but it was all the same theme. And this was the theme. So I woke up and had this dream is that our district superintendent, the boss, was like meeting with a committee and we got together and they said, Glenn, here's the deal. You know, the church has grown. There's a lot going on. It says, you've got to get more organized and you've got to be a better administrator. Things have got to be of a higher excellence. You know, I said, you've got to be all in order as we are. And I remember sitting there thinking, well, that's not happening. <laughs> and I'm not doing that. You know, and I fell back asleep. And, and, then, and then had this recurring dream is like one of our church leaders was like, you know, I looked at the bulletin and the scripture that you're using for your sermon, you also have that listed as the first reading and what's that person supposed to do when they read that? I'm thinking, oh no, we've made a mistake. we made a mistake. And, and then I had this dream that, you know, I used to have nightmares about putting out the newspaper and I either forgot a page or there's, you know, every editor has that, that thing that's like, uh-oh, did I forget to put that story? I've never had that about church until last night. And I, and I woke up another time, it's like I had the wrong code, I didn't have the right code on, I couldn't find my Bible, and I was running late to church, and I was in this panic, I said, this is going to be a mess. And I think what the Lord was telling me, yes, it's all a mess. That's why Jesus was born the way He was born. Is that to understand us, you know, royalty and kings walk with royalty and kings, and every four years when somebody runs for president, you know what they do? They rub elbows with the great unwashed. They sit down in the diner. Yeah, bring me some more of that fried chicken. You're just, you're just like one of us. They're hanging out with us. They're going shaking hands in the shops. It's like, isn't this wonderful? These candidates, they're just like us. But you know what? They're not. They're nothing like us. They live in a different world. I don't care which party they get elected. You know what they do? They don't hang out with us anymore. It's all the big jets and the planes and the fancy vacations. And you know how much attention they pay to us? They don't. You know why? Because they're not one of us. They're special. Jesus Christ is one of us. He was born in a smelly stable. Scandalous his mother was expecting before she was married. And the Lord didn't even bother telling the groom to be. Oh yeah, by the way, I got a little surprise for you. But it's okay. We get a little messy around here. I love it. So yesterday we had this event. We had this uh, breakfast with Santa. And, and so you know, I got here about an hour early, and I was worried. You know, I, got my, I got my phone in my ear walking in, as I often do. So I'm walking in, and I didn't see any cars out there. And I'm like, well, you know, Ralph's cooking, and uh, he's got a lot of cooking. And I said, I didn't see, and I panicked. I said, I don't think Ralph's here. And I opened the door and immediately smelled the bacon. I said, okay, Ralph's here. So I walked in, and... Uh, and then, of course, which is typical when we cook breakfast around here, I saw Ralph had the doors open because there was a lot of extra smoke from the bacon. So I walked in, and Ralph is busier than any Waffle House cook at 8 a.m. <laughs> I mean, man, he's got it going on. He's, he's got, like, the pancakes going, he's got the eggs going, and he's got, you know, we got juice and we got coffee, and he's even got yogurt. Ralph's got yogurt, right? Okay, but he's a one-man show. And I'm looking around I'm thinking, oh, we need a little help. So it's like, uh, better get somebody else in here. Now, we knew the event was coming up for a long time. We do this every year. So I walked in the front room where we got Santa, and there's like junk piled up in there with a bunch of chairs, and I got one little tree, and I'm like, this isn't going to work. I'm like, oh, my gosh. So I start pulling all the chairs out, and I put more decorations in, and it's like, oh, then Robin, Robin shows up, and Robin's got all the crafts, and she's like, well, I think I need two tables. And so we put the, she goes, I think I might need three she so put three of them. She goes, well, I might need four because she's got four crafts. And then we're missing, we're missing extension cords, all the extension cords. So I'm running all over. I go on the shed out there, and, and I start stealing the extension cords. And Ralph called James, and he shows up. We're scrambling. Moving tables all around. And uh, 9 o'clock comes, and, and uh, you know, we're, we're, we're pretty much prepared, and, and there, there's no kids there yet. 
About 9, 10, 9, 15, 7, 8, anybody showing up? And then Santa's doing 9, 30. Santa comes rolling in, and Santa's elf comes in, and, and they're looking great, and then the kids start rolling. The first people to come in, it's a lady with her, with her children. She's got three kids, and, and she says, we come here, we love this. We come here every year. This is great. She goes, I'm moving. She says, we're all moving to Minneapolis. She says, we are going to miss this. This is our favorite thing. I could not miss this this year. And she said, when we go move up there, we want to find a church just like this. I'm like, lady, you don't even go here. <laughs> she doesn't attend here. But she was so excited to get here. So, so they arrived, and, and they are having breakfast, doing the crafts. And then, and then some, some more rolled in. And more kids rolled in. Kids, the kids kept rolling in, and they did not stop. We had kids and families everywhere. We about ran out of chairs. And so our youth came help, and they were doing crafts, and, and uh, uh, it was pretty amazing. And you know, not only did people come and enjoy, they weren't leaving. Santa was supposed to get done at noon. They made Santa, everybody wanted pictures taken with Santa, they made Santa wait. Santa ain't that young a man anymore. <laughs> <clears throat> but it reminded me, it reminded me, it was some, uh, some years ago, when uh, my wife Candy had the idea to, to do a back to school ministry in Cherokee, it was called Give a Kid a Chance. It was the idea you take underprivileged and, and you know, you give backpacks and supplies and even clothing. And in this event, they get haircuts and eye exam and, and they got a chiropractor there and, and, you know, all these things. And so you got, well, the first year we did all this and, and uh, they got hygiene kits and all this and, and new socks and new underwear, all this. You know, you can pretty much outfit yourself for the year. The first year, I think we had like 90 or 100. In the second year, we got more churches. We had 600. The third year, there were 1,200 kids. And our church only had 100-something people. You know, so we had other churches involved. Well, the year after that, you know, it went up. It was over 2,000, like 2,400 kids on one day, you know, backpacks and clothes and ear exam and haircuts. So we had to get another site. So we had a site in North Cherokee and a site in this big church in South Cherokee. So you could imagine, you know, 1,400 kids rolling in with mom and dad and doing all that, and it was pretty well organized, but you know, it was nuts. So anyway, you know, and the kids are so happy, not just to get this stuff. I think what made them most happy, they knew people loved them. They knew people loved them. They were so excited. You know, you know if you're a kid and you don't have new supplies or a new backpack to get all that stuff? So anyway, they, they goes, so the, one of the leaders in that church I mean, went to Candy and said, I don't think we're going to do this anymore. Why don't we do this? And her comment was, we're a church of excellence. And this is not excellent. And Cain told me that and said, there's nothing about this that isn't excellent. Matter of fact, this is about as excellent as it gets. And I think, you know, we're talking about everything being just precise and, and, and perfect. And uh, life in that way, is it? And that first Christmas wasn't much that way, was it? As a matter of fact, God's people are kind of a mess, aren't they? And we try to straighten them and clean up, and in the, in the bottom line is, I, I hope we're never a dot every I, cross every T church. That's got nothing to do with size. It's got nothing to do with how many people or how big your church is. It's got everything to do with your attitude and how you present and how you greet people. And, and, and so this, we have this, this wonderful day, and, I, and I'll, I'll tell you, it's, uh, I've been through, I've been through, you know, over the three decades or so we've been involved in church stuff and all these activities and, and whether it was uh, you know, special events for back to school or Valentine's Day or Christmas productions and Easter sunrise and barbecues. I said, of all that, I said, uh, I'm sure there were events that were more special. I'm sure I've been a part of events that were every bit as special as what it was yesterday. I can't think of one. I can't think of one. And, yeah, I guess we could have had, I guess we could have had family tradition or Waffle House cater it and they did the cooking. I, I'm sure we could have brought some, some uh, we could have brought Martha Stewart in to do the crafts. But you know what? <laughs> yeah. But you know what? Uh, not only would that not made it better, it wouldn't have been as good. It wouldn't have been as good. And so there was one young man came in with his mom, and, and she hadn't been here before. Never been here, and, and like a single mom. And uh, 
the little boy you know, comes in. Of course, Robin is just bubbling. You know, she's beaming. Got these awesome crafts. And says, it's so great. says, you, you can do crafts. You can do all these here. We've got four different crafts. And then, and then you can do, we've got pancakes and we've got eggs. And we've got, you know, you know, plenty of food. And then you can see Santa and you can hang out. We had the doors open and the nursery in their plane. So you can just hang out. And, uh, and the boy's real excited. The mom looked a little apprehensive. Like, she didn't really know what she was getting into. And the little boy says, well, how much does this cost? And Robin said, well, this is all free. This is free. Because we do this because we love, we enjoy it. And the little boy's like, see, Mom, I told you it was free. <laughs> he, said, he said, this is what they do here. This is what they do here. You know, we're a mess. We're a mess. I, you know, Nathan and I are moving out. You know, all, all this past week, we had so much going on. Last week, we had the... The, the big women's luncheon on Saturday, they decorated, it looked gorgeous. Well, right after that, bumping into them, Gay Washburn brings 20 young girls in here to cook meals and bring it to the needy. Move tables around again. And of course, after Sunday service, you know, we had our, 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 uh, we had our Christian believers Sunday afternoon and prayer group Monday, and then we had Norman's reception. We got people scrambling, people volunteering, did an awesome job on the reception. There's stuff going on here all the time. And then, of course, we had to set the tables up for yesterday. Now lunch, and Nathan and I are moving all the tables around this morning. We can't find all the tablecloths. So I'm going to get in trouble. <laughs> but it's not the last time I'm going to get in trouble. Because we're a bit of a mess. You know, little mums out there around that cross, they're all dead. They look terrible. They do. We've got Christmas Eve next week. We're going to be staying around that. You know what? It's going to be all right. Because the Lord takes what, what, what is a mess and He makes it to His glory. And so we make mistakes and maybe we recite the wrong verse or sing the wrong note. But we have a God who walks among us, who pits skin on to remind us, says, it's okay. There's a candle of love. Phil just lit that candle. There's few things that cause my heart more joy than listening to these stories of Jack. <laughs> You know, and Jack would just get unflustered. But you know what? As much as Jack loved Randy, y'all loved him back. And I so love the fact that it, when Jack was having some, some challenges, you know, some issues with, with keeping things in order, he might repeat himself, might say the same. And you know what? It really didn't matter, did it? Because we make things a mess. And the Lord has arrived to fix them. Let us pray. Lord, we celebrate your love for us. We celebrate what this season means. Help us, Lord, never to be ones that focus on dotting the I's and crossing the T's, but in mercy and grace with arms wide open say, we love you, we forgive you, because that's what we do here. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Our hymn of invitation is, well, Deja Vu, Go Tell It on the Mountain. Let's go, let's go ahead and uh, do page 249. There's a song in the air. Let's sing that. 249. 
hope you all hang around to eat. It's going to be good. If you now receive the benediction, go forth from this place of hearts full of assurance that that little baby born 2,000 years ago is alive and well and present among us. So go out and tell somebody about it. Is that all God's people said? Amen. Amen. Don't